Hello there, science friends, and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for the Scientist. Okay, so today I've got more of a tip for you rather than a technique, and we're going to be looking at how to stay organized in your document. So that is to say, keeping your layers in a way that uh, if you were to come back and work on this figure later on down the road, or maybe send it off to a collaborator, you'd be able to easily tell what's going on. And so for this figure, it's or the figure that we've been working on here, it's not too bad because really there's just a handful of layers and we've been pretty good at keeping all of the layers named properly. However, if I click over here to this other figure, you can see that as things get more complicated and as you have more elements in the figure, um, these layers can pile up really quickly. And it becomes especially difficult when every single layer is named vector smart object copy. And uh, yeah, they just... They just go on forever. Yeah, all the yeah, yeah. No, yeah, nobody, nobody wants to look at that. So you don't want this to happen. So we're gonna go back to our figure here, and I'm gonna show you a couple different things. Uh, you probably won't want to use them all at the same time. Uh, you may like some better than others. So again, as with most things that I show you, uh, you just kind of gotta pick what works best for you. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to link layers. And that basically does exactly what you would expect it to by linking your layers together. So say for example, uh, if we look at this green panel here, and say if we wanted to move it around, uh, but we want everything to stay positioned where it is, so the text and the arrow. And what we could do every time is select uh, all three layers every time we want to move something or modify something, but that's a little cumbersome. So to link them, uh, we can start by finding the three layers and selecting them individually. So for instance, I'll click blue arrow here. I'll control click green to select that layer as well. And that's the text green, the text layer there. And then the image cerebellum green. And again, I'm control clicking to select all three. And when they're all selected, you right click and uh, my menu here is going to fall off the screen a bit. But if you go up to link layers, you'll see that it puts a, a little chain icon on each layer, which you'll only see um, when you're clicked on one of these linked layers. And so when these layers are linked, if you go, let's say you want to move this around, they're all going to come together. Um, or if you want to resize, they're all going to resize proportionally together. If, uh, if my computer cannot get too confused while it's trying to resize. Come on, buddy. There you go. Um, but we're not interested in that right now. So I'm just going to back up a bit because uh, that's just one way of doing things. So say you would link everything in this panel together. You could link your blue uh, text and image together and so on. And uh, that's just one way to keep things organized and keep things together. Now, to be honest, I don't really use that that often. Uh, what I'm more of a fan of is using groups or grouping my layers together. Um, and this is pretty intuitive. Um, if you've worked, well, basically any sort of folder system in Windows is pretty pretty similar. And so to create groups, uh, you're going to be using this little icon down here, this new folder icon. And so what we want to do, or at least what I want to do when I'm building a figure, is to group my text together, my shapes together, and my image panels together. So first of all, I'm going to take my figure one text, and I'm going to move it up here because uh, Normally, I don't include that in my uh, image text group, um, and I find it's just nice to have right at the top because it's just a nice placeholder for we know we're working with figure one here. But this other text uh, would be merge red, green, and blue. Uh, I like to group these together. So to do that, um, I'll shift click to select all my text layers here, and you can either click the new group button or you can use the shortcut key of control G. And so once you've created that group, you can double click on group one here and rename it to something like text, which makes a lot of sense, and just hit enter. And you can see if you click this drop down or twirly arrow here, all of my text layers are now in this folder. And so I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing for my other groups of uh, layers here. So I'm going to take my images, control click, and create the group out of those guys. And I'll call this images. And then I'll do the same thing to my shapes. And control G, call this shapes. And so already things are looking a little cleaner in here. And what you can even do now is you can group these groups. So say if you had uh, another couple of rows of images here, uh, what I would typically do is to take this, these three groups here and group them again. And I would call this maybe row one. 
And so you can see uh, everything is all nicely nested in there. And this just makes it so that if anybody were to come and start working in this document, or if you were to come back to it maybe a couple months down the road, you would know exactly where everything is. So again, that's uh, the second way there. And the last thing I want to show you is another function that, honestly, I don't really make too much use of myself, but it could be useful for you maybe. And that is uh, Photoshop provides you with a lot of different options for filtering your layers. And that's all in this uh, toolbar here. And so to activate this toolbar, there's this little switch here. So when it's all grayed out, it's off, or you can click it on. And so uh, with Kind, it gives you a couple of different options for filtering out your layers. So for instance, this first one lets you filter out only your pixel-based layers. And in this case, that's just the background, the white layer here. Um, the next is any sort of adjustment layers, which we don't have any in this uh, figure that we're working on, so it's not particularly relevant. But we also have text, so you click this and it gives you all of your text layers. And so this is handy if, say, you want to change the text size of all of the text in your image. Uh, you can just bring it all up here in one spot. We also have shapes and then our smart objects, which are all of our images here. And so you can select uh, any sort of combination of these that you like. Um, so it's pretty versatile that way. And in addition to that, you also have this drop-down list of several other options you can use. So for instance, name, uh, you can search any um, layer name that you might have. So for instance, if we say merge, it will bring up anything with the name merge. So we have our text, our merge box, and our uh, cerebellum merged image here. So I'm not going to go through them all, but you can play around uh, now that you know that they're here. We can go by effects or colors, but I'll leave, you, uh, leave that to you to have a look at if you so desire. And I think really that uh, kind of does it all for today. So I guess I will sign off by saying you worked hard to get that data. So why not work a little harder to make sure it's organized? And because you'll thank yourself. Believe me, you will. Because I've cursed myself enough times about this. Uh, okay, okay then. So <laughs> I guess that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.